Let's take a look at every country who's qualified for the 2018 World Cup and their best players from 20 years ago. Russia, Alexei Smirtin. Remember Alexei Smirtin? He sort of seemed like the only reason he got a job at Stamford Bridge was because the owner happened to be Russian. 2003's answer to Yuri Zarkov, I suppose you would say. It didn't work out at Chelsea, but Smirtin was a decent player for the international side. Back in 1998, the midfielder was just 22, but was about to earn a move to high-flying locomotive Moscow. Saudi Arabia, Sami El Jaber. Aside from a non-existent four-game loan stint at Wolves 18 years ago, Sami El Jaber spent his entire career Saudi Arabian giant Al Halal. With 46 goals and 156 caps, this man is widely regarded as one of his country's greatest ever players. Although, let's be honest, that's not saying much. Egypt, Hani Ramsey. No, there was no Mo Salah back then, so we'll go for Egypt's defensive general of 1998, Hani Ramsey. And no, I'm sure he wasn't named after that annoying chef. Ramsey made his international debut in 1988, and the former Werder Bremen defender made over 120 appearances for his country. Uruguay, Alvaro Urcoba. Considering he spent most of of his eight seasons stuck on the bench at Inter Milan, Alvaro Rocobo was probably one of the most underrated forwards in Europe. On his day though, the Uruguayan hitman was a deadly player and just one in a long line of talented strikers to emerge from that country. Portugal, Luis Figo. Finally, we've managed to go back far enough to a point where the answer for Portugal is not Cristiano Ronaldo. I'd be a little worried if a 13-year-old kid with goofy teeth was the best player a country could offer, to be honest. Luis Figo was Portugal's standout by a mile in 1998, with the 25-year-old winning back-to-back -back league titles with Barcelona, before obviously going on to cross enemy lines and get a big Head chucked at him. Morocco, Noradin Nebet. Don't laugh, Tottenham fans, alright? Noradin Nebet was actually a very good player on his day. The Moroccan retired at White Hart Lane, and a goal against Arsenal aside didn't really do much. But back in 1998, he was a rock at the heart of the defence for Deportivo La Coruña. The Moroccan captain went on to be capped 115 times. Spain, Raul. Raul was an amazing player. Spain's emblem and talisman for so many years. Back in the late 90s, he was up there as one of the best footballers on the planet. Not many scored 323 goals for Real Madrid and end up playing over 100 times for Spain. I bet he's got it, his country started winning everything in sight as soon as he quit international duty. Iran, Ali Dei. Not only is Ali Dei a former captain of Iran and can call on Bayern Munich as a former club of his, but he is also the world's all-time leading goal scorer in international matches. For an Iranian footballer, this is absolutely insane. 109 goals, 149 games. Of course, he gets in. He gets in here twice. Good lord. Having said that, a, a huge percentage of his strikes were against the defensive heavyweights that are Sri Lanka, Nepal and Iraq. Pretty sure I could get a game for them. France, Zinedine Zidane. Not only was Zinedine Zidane France's best player 20 years ago, but he was also the star man on the planet. Two goals in a World Cup final against Brazil? Come on. We all know the genius of the then Juventus midfielder. He'd get his move to Real Madrid in 2001, before bowing out in 2006 by ploughing his skull into an Italian's chest. Australia, Harry Kuehl. Harry Kuehl, who was ripping it up for Leeds United as a fresh-faced 19-year-old back in 1998. Within two years, he'd be scoring 20 goals a season. Peru, Alberto Solano. Another Premier League wing star, Nabi Solano had just touched down in England back in 1998, when Newcastle signed a 23-year-old from Boca Juniors, as he became the first Peru-born footballer to play in England. Nobody had a clue what to expect. Almost 50 goals for the Magpies later, I think his time was a success. Denmark, Peter Schmeichel. Peter Schmeichel was nearing the end of his Manchester United career, but let's not forget that within a year he'd have won the treble. Not a bad way to cut short your United career, certainly better than somehow fumbling a 50-yard putt into the net. Argentina, Gabriel Batistuta. Sorry, 10-year-old Lionel Messi, who back in 1998 was probably terrified about remaining three foot for the rest of his life. Gabriel Batistuta was Argentina's best player 20 years ago, and nobody can dispute it. He scored 24 goals for Fiorentina during the 97-98 season, 26 the following campaign, and 12 in 12 matches for Argentina during the calendar year, earning him the FIFA World Cup Silver Shoe, oh and uh, what's that, the Argentine Player of the Year award, Iceland, Eider Johnson. I mean, who else am I going to put in, really? Tim from down the warehouse? Eider Johnson might have been a sprightly teenager 20 years ago, instead of now looking like a weary Victor Creed, but the Bolton striker was clearly the most talented a player in the Iceland squad. Croatia, Davor Suker. Just like nowadays, we'll give this honour to the man at Real Madrid. Just a few years off traipsing around England, Davor Suker was battering the men for Real Madrid on a regular basis. 44 goals in his first 80 games. He also scored 12 goals in 13 games for Croatia in 1998, earning himself the World Cup Golden Shoe and the runner up prize in the Ballon d'Or. Nigeria, JJ Okacha. Not really sure why a player as talented as JJ Okacha decided to waste four precious years of his career playing under Sam Allardyce, but back in 1998 he was lighting it up at PSG. When Ronaldinho arrived, the PSG defenders must have had nightmare training sessions. Hashtag pray for Pochettino. Brazil, Ronaldo. Ronaldo will like to remember 1998, or the fact that a player has effectively stolen his name, relegating this guy to just being an afterthought in the history books. Bit unfair, considering what a phenomenon he once was. Obviously, this was before he discovered the celebrity discount at KFC. In 1998, he was arguably Europe's most prolific marksman, having just scored 34 goals in his debut season at Inter Milan. But a seizure sustained hours before the World Cup final effectively destroyed Brazil's chances against France. 
defense. He still won the golden ball though. Switzerland, Stefan Chapuisa. Stefan Chapuisa was a prolific goal scorer for Switzerland, 21 and 103 caps, but also for Borussia Dortmund during the late 90s with 102 strikes in 218 games as they won two league titles and reached the Champions League final. Certainly a far cry from getting battered 6 0 these days. Costa Rica, Paolo Wancho. Paolo Wancho was the country's best player once upon a time. Good God. In 1998, to be fair, he just scored 13 for Derby County in the top flight. Not too bad. He'd go on to score 45 goals for his country, including twice in the opening game of the 2006 World Cup. Serbia, Sinisa Mihailovic. Right, well, 20 years ago, Serbia were not a footballing country, so we'll just have to look for a Serbian born player from that Yugoslavian team, Sinisa Mihailovic. Glenn, the former Roma defender, was a rock for Sampdoria in 1998. Germany, Oliver Kahn. Jurgen Klinsmann was an option, but we'll go for Oliver Kahn, a man who looks like a cross between Matt Damon and an unbalanced drug dealer with a psychotic uncle. Mexico, Osvaldo. Osvaldo Sanchez. Another goalkeeper, Osvaldo Sanchez was playing for a Mexican club, America. He never actually left his homeland, but he's highly regarded as one of the best players Mexico has ever produced. He retired with 99 caps for his country. Sweden, Henrik Larsson. In a time before Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Sweden's star man was a dreadlocked 5 foot 9 inch striker who was battering them in the Dutch league at Feyenoord. Many were sceptical of Henrik Larsson's true worth, with the Dutch league making stars of the De Jong brothers, so off he went to spend the best years of his career in Scotland. But no, Larsson was an excellent player, I mean he retired with over 100 caps and a Champions League medal. South Korea, Hong Myung Bo. Regarded as one of the greatest players Asia has ever produced, Hong Myung Bo was at Belmer Hiratuka. He retired in 2004 at LA Galaxy and with 136 caps to his name. Belgium, Marc Wilmo. Oh, Belgium. 20 years ago, the best player was Marc Wilmo. Seriously, a former standard Liège and Schalke attacking midfielder. That lad wouldn't even make their bench nowadays. Well, actually, if Divock Origi still does, then maybe. But he wouldn't get in the team. What have they been feeding the little Belgians over the last two decades? Panama, Julio Deli Valdez. How many Panamanians, is that right? Do you know that have scored 23 goals for PSG, finishing runner-up in the league twice? Now fair enough, finishing runner-up with PSG now would be a shootable offence, but this striker is one of Panama's most influential players of all time. He also played for Real Oviedo and Malaga. England, Alan Shearer. Yeah, big, strong, and knew where the back of the net was Harry K. So Alan Shearer was England's best player. Of course he was. The 27-year-old Newcastle striker was also on his way to becoming the Premier League's all-time record goal scorer. Tunisia, Zubir Bea. Not a lot of talent to choose from here, lads. Zubir Bea was the captain of Tunisia in 1998, and yeah, you've probably never heard of him. But he was twice named Tunisian Footballer of the Year and scored 27 goals in 81 caps. Poland, Jersey Dudek. Poland seemed to have a habit of producing nifty goalkeepers. What throw in Jersey Dudek, who was about to win the national championship with Feyenoord? Senegal, Moussa Ndai. Four years before Senegal exploded onto the World Cup stage with a host of young talent, Moussa Ndai was probably their standout man in the late 90s, with the wide man trying to cut his teeth at Monaco. Just a shame about the rest of his career. He spent the last seven years playing in Dakar. Colombia, Ivan Cordoba. Yes, he was only 21 years old, but still, Ivan Cordoba, the then San Lorenzo centre-back, was arguably Colombia's best player. Japan, Hidetoshi Nikata. It's strange to think Hidetoshi Nikata gave up football at the age of 29 to become the next Gakuan back in Japan or whatever. Far too much talent to just piss down the drain. In 1998, he was a highly rated 21-year-old at Perugia, and he scored 10 goals in Syria. He was voted Asian Footballer of the Year for a second year running to think he'd be quitting football a few years later. Madness. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.